Hello everyone, so today we're going to be talking about Sandstorm Temple and this is simply a guide on how to, how to do this dungeon. So we're going to start here with the first boss. So the first boss, the mechanics are rather simple. You can see that this guy has, um, he has four CC bars. What we need to do is we need to make sure that we have at least four stuns and we have four KDs. As a ranged player, we're going to stand right here. You can see that this, there's this line over here, the circle, right? We're going to stand there and DPS the boss. The reason is because this distance from here to the boss is about eight meters. So, you know, we want to stand around eight meters away from the boss because that way most of his attacks will be able to hit us. So we're going to start the video here and you're going to see what I mean. So we're going to run here, run here, and then we're DPSing. So what happens here is immediately our summoner steals aggro because our tank forgot to spec threat. So you can see here he jumps. So immediately I run and I stand at around 8 meters. You can see here that I'm standing at 5 meters and I'm in his attack range. So you're going to see later that I move back a little bit to 8 meters. And voila, you see I've moved backwards. So you see here that I've moved backwards at 7 meters, which is, it's, it's okay as well. 7 meters is like really borderline. But you can see that he has this red AoE attack coming right now. And you can see that, uh, you know, Ruby and me are standing at exactly 7 meters, which is out of his range for his AoE attack. So the main reason why we want to stay out of this red AoE attack is because it's a punishment. It's basically the same thing as punishment from Raven King. So it's going to be the inner attack and then the outer attack, and it's going to end. So what we do is we stand at the edge over here at exactly 7 meters, or 8 meters if you want to be safe. And then once this inner attack explodes, we run in. And then the outer side's going to explode. That way we don't get hit by any of these punishment stacks. So you can see here, it blows up. And immediately we run in as the outside is going to blow up. So now we just continuously DPS and we stand at 7 to 8 meters and we'll be perfectly safe from the boss. So you can see here at 8 meters, the attack, the attack range is uh, over here. So, you know, we have plenty of space before we get hit. So, um, I, I prefer to stand at 8 meters, but, you know, 7 meters works perfectly fine. So, DPS, 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 and you can see at 80%, the boss is going to jump into the middle. When the boss jumps into the middle, he's going to use his fist and pound the ground and cause a shockwave. You want to jump over the shockwave. So, you see here, and now he pounds the ground and the shockwave is going to appear. You want to jump over the shockwave, you can see here that I jump too early and thus I get hit by the shockwave. So you don't want to get hit by the shockwave because it pushes you really far away from the boss. And then when you, you can see here that we get pushed all the way back here and now he will start casting these red AoE attacks. There's a, you see there's circles there, 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 here and all over the place, right? So he's going to cast these five times. So what we want to do is we want to get to where Steve is, or we want to get right here, and we want to chill on this line. The main reason why we want to chill on this line is because um, after he finishes all his AoE attacks, he's going to shoot Chain Lightning on the furthest target. When he hits the furthest target with the Chain Lightning, the Chain Lightning will bounce off you and hit other players close to you. You need to make sure that there's at least two players next to you if you are the furthest mark, or else the Chain Lightning will kill you. So that's why we all chill over here, because we just said that, you know, this is our safe spot. We're all going to huddle up here, and we're going to get the mark. So you can see here, I immediately get close to the boss. I'm standing on this line, just chilling here, trying to dodge the circles. You can see here that I get hit by the circle, by the AoE, but I do not... I do not F roll because if I F roll, I'm afraid I'll get out of range and if he does his light chain lightning attack, it will kill me. After his AoE attacks, it's going to say he tries to catch someone in a sand trap. This means he's about to shoot his chain lightning. You need to make sure that you have at least two people next to you and uh, he's going to shoot the furthest target. So you can see here, he shoots me. Even though Ruby did F roll further than me, he chose the target when the, when the flavor text comes out. So I was the furthest target when the text came up. So even though Ruby F rolled further than me, he was going to shoot me anyway. 
So you can see here that he immediately shoots me and this chain lightning is going to bounce off Steve, who is over here, and then bounce off Ruby, who is over here. So you can see like that, and we all get this symbol on our head. It's really hard to see right now, but the moment we get this symbol, his CC bars are going to open. When his CC bars open, we immediately need to stun him. So here we go, you see? His CC bars open, we stunned it, and we're fine. If you do not stun him, it, it will wipe the team. You guys will die. So immediately, right after stunning, he's, uh, he's going to do this big AoE and freeze everyone. Boom. So once he's done this big sound, sand AoE, all other players, except for the players with the mark on their head, are going to be frozen. So you can see here that, you know, here you can see the mark very clearly. I have a mark. Uh, Steve has a mark and Ruby has a mark and you can see that the players over here there's a uh, there's Peach over here and Key over here and then there's Mars on the other side these three players are frozen they are unable to move unable to cast any skills and they can only stand there and watch however they do not take any damage from the boss's attack as well so the three people with the marks so that would be me uh, Steve and Ruby are going to KD the boss at a very specific moment and that's what we have to do so we're going to DPS the boss now and now you can pay close attention you can see that there is a hourglass symbol over here so this hourglass is a is a is a debuff we need to make sure that when this hourglass symbol disappears that we KD the boss make sure that sometimes the game glitches out and the hourglass will disappear for half a second make sure you do not KD him during that moment wait for a second and if the hourglass does not reappear then kd so you're going to see here that we're going to dps normally 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 so you can see here that our summoner accidentally kd'd early because the hourglass has not disappeared yet so none of us follow up and it's fine because we still have two kds with me and the force master so we're waiting we're waiting we're waiting and you can see now so now you can see that the hourglass disappeared and we're going to wait for about a second once we're sure that it doesn't reappear then we're going to kd you can see here oh it doesn't come up boom we kd so the moment we kd the boss everyone else is going to get a shield so boom he hits the ground you can see that all of us have this little circle circle uh, shield around us and this basically means that we are immune to his uh, to his attacks like his big aoe attacks so you can see here he, these big aoe attacks that he hits with the with his ball over here you see these big aoe attacks we're immune to all of these you can see here that it does no damage to us and that we can just keep constantly dpsing so we dps and that's the main that's the first phase complete the second phase is basically a repeat of it so you see that he jumps into the middle of the map again and he's going to smash his fist and cause a shockwave once more boom you jump over the shockwave however right after that attack on the second phase he's going to aim to destroy all targets he's going to do a suction attack which sucks everyone into the middle of him and you have to f roll out immediately or else it'll hurt you a lot you can see here we f roll immediately and his cc bars open on normal mode if you stun if you don't stun him you it'll be fine you guys will just take a lot of damage however if you're playing hard mode you must stun at this place or else you will wipe so you can see here that there's a daze by someone who uh, tab escaped. So we are all going to take a lot of damage here. Because he does this room wide AOE. And you can see immediately we lose three players because they because we didn't stun. But on hard mode we would have wiped. So here right after that he's going to do a he's going to select the furthest target and do an AOE beam attack. You can see there and he does that. So these beams are consistent damage. You do not want to stand in them. In a perfect run, you'd like to have the beam overlap each other so that you wouldn't have this problem of kind of splitting the team in half. But um, in this case, you know, this, this is what just happened. So over here, he grabs me because our tank lost aggro. So apparently I'm tanking now. So here, I'm just going to block. I don't tank this boss often, so I'm, I don't really know his attack patterns, unfortunately. You can see there that if the tank gets too far from the boss, he's immediately going to charge you, grab you, and smash you on the ground like that. 
Luckily, we pushed him to 30%, which is his next mech phase. So it's going to jump into the middle again and then uh, cause a shockwave. So you make sure that you jump over the shockwave. If you don't, you get pushed back like me. And now we're just DPSing until he does his sand trap again. So we're just chilling here. We're just waiting for a sand trap. And here we go. He tries to catch someone in his sand trap again. So he's going to zap the furthest target. This time I was not the furthest target. Ruby was the furthest target. And since there's four people standing here, it bounced off Ruby onto uh, Peach and onto Steve. And so I was not hit by the... I do not have this little glowy mark on my head. So you can see here that immediately right after that we had to stun the boss. And this is what happens if you do not have the mark on your head. You're just frozen in time, you take no damage, however you can do nothing as well. So you can see here, I'm just inspecting my gunner and say, oh, look, look how silly she looks. And we're just waiting and you see the hourglass has disappeared again. So we're just waiting for our team to KD. So you can see there's KD and we're good. And once he lands, we get out of the time freeze and we have the shield around us. So we're immune to this big AOE attack and we can continuously to DPS. And that's it for this boss. There's no other mechanic for this boss on normal mode. And um, yeah, it's relatively, it's relatively straightforward. As long as you know when to stun, when to KD, it's relatively simple. So uh, now I'll be moving on to the last boss of Sandstorm Temple. However, I have footage of this on my summoner. So let's switch over. So we're back now. This time this is the last boss, or Rakesh with my summoner and we were five manning it and um, the main reason why i'm showing it on my summoner was because this was a slightly lower dps party and it's easier to explain all the mechanics and since i'm playing on my summer summoner a low mobility character i show you how to do far mark on a low mobility character as well so at the beginning you always want to make sure that your tank is standing here which you can see from the from the buildings or the runes at the, at the back which we, we call the Taj Mahal. So we have the tank stand on this line over here, making sure that he is uh, facing the, like to his back is gonna be the Taj Mahal. The main reason why is because we want the boss to be facing this direction. When the boss is facing that direction, it means it makes a triangle over here, a perfect triangle of a safe zone. So we wanna make this the safe zone so that we can chill here, mainly chill at the side over here or over there and safely DPS the boss. That's the main reason why we make the tank stand over here. But um, let me just show you what I mean. So we see we start the start the roof. Ah, we start the run standing here. So you can see here that he's smashing his fist into the ground. When he smashes his second fist, it doesn't matter which side he smashes. Just be prepared to block because he's going to do a, he's going to do a really big uh, room wide swipe. You can see here. Boom, you see, it's not. it doesn't cover the entire room. However, if his fist is over here, it's gonna cover everything up to here. So there's only one safe zone here. However, the, the way that we play is no matter which arm he hits, we just make sure we block it. If you're a summoner, you can use a party block, I mean, you can use a uh, party stealth to protect everyone from this attack. So you can see that he swipes. And then right after that, you can see that this there's going to be a red zone, you can see, and it creates a safe zone right here. The main reason why this is the safe zone is because it's directly behind the boss, because the boss is facing the Taj Mahal, or this building over here, because that's where the tank is standing. So because that's happening, he's created a safe zone. So what we do is we all stack up around here, or we all stack up around there, because uh, that way we don't need to move that much. You can see here he's going to do that pushback. So right after he finishes the triangle attack, he's immediately going to do a, a rectangle push attack. And the reason why we stand here is because we're immune to both attacks. So even if he does his triangle attack, by just by standing here, we're not going to get hit by the triangle attack, nor are we going to get hit by this rectangle attack. So we're safe. So you can see that this area right here is the safe zone. And it's the same over here. If you want to stand here, this is also the safe zone. So that's why we stand there. So you can see that once that's done. 
So right after that, normally you would run inside because he will do a circle attack where like the inner circle is safe. And then immediately right after that, you'd have to run outwards because then he'll hit the inner side. It's kind of like the, uh, it's kind of like Raven King, you know, punishment again. However, in this case, because the tank got too far, you can see key over here. He got too far away from the boss. So the boss is going to do this attack and hit the ground multiple times and hurt everyone. So if the tank gets too far away from the boss, he will spam that attack constantly and it will kill the, kill the party. But right after that, he'll reset his attack pattern again. He'll do two regular swipes. Right after the regular swipe, he's going to smash his hands onto the ground again. So make sure after he slams here, you block. You can use a party stealth if you want. And then uh, right after that, he's going to do his triangle attack. You can see here, you can see that it does again. He's casting the triangle. So right after the triangle, he's going to do the rectangle attack. You see triangle. And right after that, rectangle coming up rectangle attack and then we immediately move in so right after the rectangle attack you move in because he's doing this circle attack he's gonna you see how this there's this big circle so the inside of the safe zone and the outside is the not safe zone so you walk in and immediately right after that you walk out and that's it that's his entire attack rotation at the first phase so it's relatively simple as a range character we just kind of chill here you look at his fists, oh, you block this, and then we just DPS, DPS, he's going to do his triangle thing again, you see this triangle, you stay in the safe zone, rectangle attack, move in, but because our tank got too far again, he does the smash attacks, swipe, swipe, and then right here, because we push past 80%, once we get past 80%, it's going to say, Rakesh uses a glyph to unlock Mystic Force. So what he's going to do is he's going to smash the ground multiple times. So now he's going to hit the ground multiple times. He's going to hit one, two, three. And right after that, you're going to see that these lines start glowing. So it won't always have these two light up. It's It could be, uh, it could be any of these squiggly lines. You see one, two and uh, three, four, five, and six. It could be any of the six lines over here that could light up, but only the squiggly lines light up. So you can see that these two lit up. Right after he unlocks the glyphs and these squiggly lines light up, he immediately is gonna do the triangle attack into the rectangle attack into the inner, into the outer. So we're gonna stand here, you see, rectangle, I'm gonna go to the inner, I'm gonna go to the outer. So right after this attack, he's going to target the two furthest people and put a mark on their head. So since I am the furthest mark, I have to run all the way out to the edge of the map. You don't have to run to the edge of the map, but I always do because um, I just like to stand. I like to make sure that I'm the furthest person. So you see here, I run all the way to the edge and it says Rakesh searches for a target to judge. So you can see that he's picked me and Peach over here. How do you know you've been picked? You have this eye on your head. So you can see that me and Peach both have this little eye on our head. So um, the person who is the furthest, so in, in this case, I was the furthest, he is going to pull in later and then we have to stun him. So I'm usually the furthest target. The main reason I'm the furthest target is because as a summoner, I can still stun the boss even though I'm grabbed because Marky is not, he won't get grabbed with me. So he, he can still do any CCs and I can still control him normally. That's why I like to be the furthest target. So you can see here, right after that, he's gonna smash the ground multiple times again. And right after this, he's gonna pull me you can see here, he cast this magical Doctor Strange looking circle and he's going to grab me. The moment he grabs me, his CC bars are going to open and we, are, we need to stun him before he does his room white AoE and wipes the party. So you can see here, stun, stun, stun. We've stunned him. So it's stopped the room white AoE and we're not going to die. So immediately I'm going to run back. So as the far mark, usually we stay on the, on the glowy line. So you can see that I'm standing on this line saying that I'm going to run into this circle later. And you can see Peach, she's standing on that line because she's going to run into that circle later. So that way we don't get confused on who's taking what line. And there's also another reason, which I'll explain in a sec. 
So immediately after the stun, he's going to do 10 sand AoE attacks. It may seem random at first, however, there is a pattern. So you can see this is the first circle. This is the second circle. This is the third explosion. So did you see the third explosion was on my right side and on my left side? So, you know, you're standing here, right? Once you see that the third explosion happens, or it might, it could be the fourth or the fifth, there's no specific number. But once you see there, there's an explosion on your left and your right, you immediately want to start moving towards this little circle over here. So you can see here that once I saw those two explosions, I start running here. So you can see that this explosion over here was dangerously close to this circle. But as long as you stay on the side of the circle or, or dead center of the circle, you won't get hit by any of these explosions. So you're going to stand here and you're going to wait. You're going to wait until there's an explosion on your right and on your left again. So you're going to keep counting here. And then here you see there's an explosion on my left and my right. So once this happens, you run forward. The main reason you run forward is because there's going to be a big explosion over here, which covers the center of the circle. So the moment you see the left and the right explode, move forward. So usually this is around number nine or number eight explosion. And that was number 10 explosion right there. And once 10 explosions has finished, the people with the eye or the people with the far marks have to get ready to run into the circle. We're going to wait here until this text comes up, until it says Rakesh unleashes his wrath. Once you see this text run up, you immediately want to run into the circle. You see that I run into the circle, this cube appears. It's going to shoot a beam thing over there, and it's going to shoot a ball on the other one. On normal mode, it doesn't matter what order you do it at. However, if you are playing on hard mode, whoever gets grabbed, he or she needs to go into the circle first if you're playing hard mode. If you're playing normal mode, it doesn't matter. Just walk into the circle whenever that text comes up. So you're going to see here that Rakesh is weakened from, uh, from because we did the mechanic, basically. And we can just continue to DPS. So it's going to reset back to the regular face. You know, he's going to he's going to do his regular slams and everything. Just make sure that you block his attacks. And he's going to do swipe, swipe. And he's going to do the triangle again. See the triangle into the rectangle into the inner outer. But you can see here that our tank got hit back from the rectangle attack. So now he's going to do the room wide four smash attack because the tank was too far. So one, two, three, four. Four, and we take some damage and it resets his uh, animation again his ro entire rotation however once we get to 50% it's going to say Rakesh judges with his all-seeing gaze so he's going to create a, uh, a death zone outside so you want to make sure that you stay inside the zone you're going to see here that he creates a death zone you see this black wall outside so Anything out here is going to be a death zone. So you want to stay within this arena and not out or else you will take a lot of damage. It doesn't insta-kill you, but you will take damage over time. He's going to target the furthest person and there's going to be a circle mark around you. So you can see here that this person, uh, I, I don't, I can't see who that is, but um, this person was marked. And so there, the circle is going to close in and it's going to shoot a huge laser beam at them. And you're going to see that now. You can see that immediately after it hits them with that laser beam, it's going to create a shock wave. So everyone in the party needs to jump over that shock wave. If you get hit by the shock wave, first of all, it knocks you back closer to the death zone. And second of all, it gives you a stack. You do not want stacks of these laser beams because you will, you'll take a lot of damage. So you can see there, now he targets the next person, which is Peach over here. Again, there's this huge laser beam. The circle's going to close in and then push outwards. Close in and push outwards. So you want to jump over this explosion. So again, you can see here. So there are different types of lasers that he can attack you with. He'll attack you with either the small laser beam, which is the one that we just saw Peach jump over, or he can hit you with a big laser beam. If he hits you with a big laser beam or the black looking ones, it's just that's a detonator. If he has if you see a big circle around you, you want to stay away from these red laser beams. Because um, if you detonate any of these, 
the entire raid or the entire party will take a lot of damage. So you can see here that now I have a circle around me. This is the small one. So it's going to be like these red pillars. So it's going to charge up and then it's going to close in and then explode. You can see here, charges up and then you see it hits the ground. I immediately run out to the side and I jump over this, that laser. So you can see here that I got hit by one stack. If you get hit by the knockback of that AOE, you will get two stacks. And when you get a lot of these stacks, it's, it's like Hollow's Heart. Later on, after this phase, he's going to smash the ground. And if, he, and if you have any of those stacks and you don't iframe it, it's going to pop all of those stacks. So basically, the rule of thumb here is if you have more than four to five stacks, you're instantly going to die when he smashes the ground. There is one way to get rid of these stacks, and that is to run into the death zone. So for example, let's say I had, I don't know, five stacks. So immediately I would run to the edge over here and run into the death zone. However, before I run into the death zone, I would activate my iframe, my five second iframe, and I would wait for this debuff to disappear. It'll pop in about two seconds. So after it's popped, then I'd run back in. That way I cleanse the debuff. So you can see here, he does the shockwave again. And right after he's casted, I think it's four, four laser beams and one detonator. It might be a random order, but after he's targeted that five people, I think, or maybe six, it's five or six laser beams, he's going to smash the ground and create a really big uh, laser AOE thing. So you make sure you jump over this. However, you also need to keep in mind the moment you jump over this and this, and this hits the other laser beams, you see there's laser beams over here all of these three are going to detonate as well so you're going to see what i mean here you can see here immediately right after his big aoe you can see that this laser beam detonated that one detonated that one detonated and this one so you need to jump over all of these lasers which is why you want to space them out or else you will get hit by all of them and you will probably die so you can see here i immediately get hit by all of them if you get knocked down by any of these you're going to take a lot of damage so you can see here that I have six stacks. So what I'm going to do is immediately I'm going to try to get into the death zone, which is over here, to cleanse my stacks. And I'm trying to going to turn on my iframe. So you can see here, I immediately I use my two or my tab escape to get into the death zone. And you see, immediately I got in and then my stacks disappeared. And I also activated my self iframe just in time, just to make sure that I do not instantly die in the death zone. So now we go back to the regular phase, back to, you know, the regular rotation in the first phase. Now it's gonna be the triangle attack, the rectangle attack. We move in and then we move out and that's it. So we're just gonna continue until we hit 30%. So now that we've hit 30% is going to say Rakesh creates a glyph to unlock Mystic Force. So again, he's going to smash the ground several times and the squiggly lines are going to light up. See here, one, two, three. Now you can see that the squiggly lines lit up. However, there's now four squiggly lines instead of two. Don't worry about it too much. It's just going to mean that the far marks are going to have to do the mech twice. So basically, if you are the far mark, you just need to make sure to stand far enough um, after this rotation. So you're going to see here. So now you see here, he immediately did his triangle attack. Then he's going to do his rectangle, then inner, outer. So again, there's inner, and I SS to the outer, and I'm standing far enough to be judged. So, you know, again, immediately he's going to say, Rakesh searches for a target to judge. And you can see that I am standing at the furthest location compared to the rest of my raid. And this is the second far mark and she's standing over there. How do you know if you are the furthest mark and that you're going to get grabbed is first of all, you're going to get this eye. Both of the far marks are going to get this eye. However, if you are the furthest one, you're also going to get the circle, meaning that he's targeted you. So now we run in, he's going to smash the ground several times again. And then he's going to grab me. So the moment he grabs me, his CZ bars are going to open and we're going to need to stun him immediately. We stun him here and immediately I run back to the tip 
over here and we're going to count the explosions again. So here's the first explosion. It's going to be one, two, three. So you can see here on the third explosion, it's on my left and on my right again. So once these explode, I'm going to run towards the left side and I'm going to run towards this tiny circle over here. So let's see. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you can see that the tenth circle is going to explode there. But you can see that I was standing over here, but there was no explosion on my left or my right side. That means that I don't need to move. I can just stand right here and I'll be perfectly safe. However, if there is an explosion on my left and my right, I have to move forward. I have to move over here because there's going to be a big explosion over here, which will cover the middle and will hit me if I stay here. So I need to move forward. However, because there was no explosion on my left and my right, I could safely stand in the middle. So you can see here, that was the 10th explosion. I'm standing here waiting for this text to come up. Once this text comes up, I walk into the circle, I create the cube, and boom. So what's going to happen if for the second farm mark is they're going to do the exact same thing as me, and um, that, that's the entire mech. So you can see that he's weakened. However, you see that there are still two lines still lit up, right? So these two lines mean that we're going to have to do the mech phase again. However, we have to wait until he searches for the furthest target again. Again, he's going to do the same move again, the triangle into the rectangle into the inner and the outer. Triangle attack into the rectangle attack into the inner into the outer. Immediately after this, there is a little change here. Because this is the second phase, he's going to then slam the ground and create a big AOE laser beam pulse thing that you need to jump over. You can see here, he's going to slam the ground, boom, he's going to create this big ring. So it's going to push outwards and we have to jump over it, like that. Over here, he's searching targets to judge. So you can see here that Steve, over here, accidentally uh, tab is, well, I guess it's not tab escape, but he pressed two on the summoner. He was originally there, so you know I would be the furthest target. However, he uh, he pressed two to escape, and then now he's the furthest target. So you're gonna see that him and me are gonna be the furthest targets instead of me and Peach. You're gonna see immediately, boom! We both get the um, we both get the target, the marks. So in voice chat, you know Steve said he was gonna take the close one. So immediately I need to start running to the far one over there because originally that's the one that Peach was taking and I was taking this one. However, because the marks changed, so now I have to be ready to stand in that circle and Steve needs to get ready to stand in this circle. So immediately I need to start running towards that direction. So now he's going to pull in Steve because Steve was the furthest target. He was further than me. So he pulls in Steve, and you can see that CC bar is open, and we need to stun him immediately. Right after we stun, he's going to do something different now. Instead of immediately jumping into the 10 uh, random sand explosions, on the second phase, he's going to pull the far marks in. So you can see that there is a red attack over here charging up towards me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just tank it, really. He's going to stun, and he's going to pull me in, and I just F roll out. He's going to do the same thing to the second far mark. Stun, pull him, and then he's going to F roll out. Then right after that, he's going to do this big red AoE attack, which will knock us all up, and then into the and then into the sand phase where he does the circles again. There's one, two, three, but we killed him, so that's it. However, if you if you have a low DPS group and you don't kill him before he finishes all the ten sand attacks, it's the same thing. We're gonna you know you stand here at the glowy line. You're gonna wait until there's an explosion on your left side and your right side. When that happens, immediately run to the left to the little circle over there. You're gonna stand there and chill until you see another explosion on your left side and your right side. Move forward, and then just make sure that you have someone counting the explosions. And once 10 is complete, you run towards here, you wait for the text to come up, and you step into the circle. And that will be all the mechs. Once you've completed all the mechs, he's just going to he's just gonna continuously use his regular attacks, and um, you just DPS him until he is dead.
it's rather straightforward. So you can see here that he's dead, and that's it. This dungeon is one of the fastest dungeons. It's quite, uh, it's quite fun. I quite enjoy this dungeon because it's not as mech heavy as Ransack Treasury. Ransack Treasury is very mech heavy, and if you mess up, you wipe. But this dungeon is a lot more forgiving, a lot more straightforward, and it's it's really fun. And the, the great thing about it is we're going to be farming this dungeon a lot in order to get your new bracelet. And uh, I'm happy that they didn't make it too difficult. So um, yeah, good luck farming your bracelets. You can buy your bracelet with your Helion cores. This has been confirmed by Jonathan and will be available on the 20th of this month of June. So um, I'm looking forward to that and good luck to everyone. Anyhow, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. What can I say except you're welcome for the heels, the 